Apocalypse Tips with Lester Pips is the show that you're currently watching. It's about to start with his amazing guests, and they're going to tell you how to survive out in the apocalypse. This way you won't be dead if anything was to attack humanity and try to end it. So now you got to show up with your ears and your eyes and watch the show. It's Apocalypse Tips with Lester Pips. Hey, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what it is. We're watching the show that's Apocalypse to the list of Pips. I'm the list of Pips from the title. I'm not some other guy. I'm exactly who that song said I would be. I'm not playing any kind of tricks on you. What I'm trying to do is make sure that you know how to survive apocalypses. I'm doing y'all a favor, okay? Uh, and you'll be doing me a favor by being here watching. So thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for being here. So you might be thinking to yourself, who this guy? Why he think he qualified to talk about how he's going to survive apocalypses? That's a great question. He's doing a good job using your critical thinking brain. That's already off to a good start. I'm very happy for you. Now, who I am is I'm Lester Pips. We covered the name already, but we didn't cover the backstory. So let me get into that. I am a guy who, prior to all these COVIDs being up in the air, trying to get inside our brains, eat them up cell by cell, neuron by neuron, uh, I was going door to door to any open mic situation that would have me and saying, hey, we don't need to be thinking about what kind of comedy we could be talking about at this op open mic. We should be thinking about how's we going to survive apocalypses, okay? Because they're coming, right? There's all kinds of apocalypses that could be out there, okay? I had a user submit a potential ap apocalypse, and by user, of course, I mean audience member, <laughs> uh, audience member at Hot City Sketch, which I think that's a, 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 a sketch group at the Pack Theater huh? that I'm calling, that I'm shouting out here. Uh, they asked me, what if there was a city that was so hot it burned all the people? Right. So that's a possible apocalypse. If your city gets so hot it burned all the people. I mean, it would have to be a whole world for it to be an apocalypse. If it's just a city, then it's, it's really just a horrible calamity, not an apocalypse. But if the whole world gets so hot, I mean, then yeah, we'd have we'd have a real problem. What I do to try to to avoid the situation where the city gets so hot that um uh it burns up all the people is I do make sure that there's enough sprinklers on in any city that I'm in. I go uh I walk around neighborhoods and I think to myself, is that sprinkler on? Uh uh. And then I ask them to turn it on nicely. Uh, during, of course, during COVID, it's harder to do that since I am stuck here down here in the bunker. So my so solution to big hot real big hot city is be inside of a bunker. Oh, we got some folks in the chat. We got more apocalypses to get to, but first we got some apoc uh, uh, apocalypse chatters in the chat. That's what I'll call them. So I didn't sound like I'm uh, speaking wrong. We got Space Cowboy now saying, Lester, 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 welcome to the show, Space Cowboy now. Very happy to have you here. We got Florida Man Gamer saying that there's fire and there's clapping, and he's right. Uh, we got AC Improv saying woo, and I say to you, uh, woo too. Also, we got Bree, 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 Bree ribs. <laughs> is that what that's? What, yeah, that is what that says. Okay. Uh, 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 popping some bottles, I guess. And then, of course, the Pack Theater. Wow. Welcome to Pack TV, y'all, as they said and as I said. Now, what we're going to do is talk about those other two potential apocalypses that I wanted to address today. Okay. We covered the one from Hot City Sketch. Thank you for submitting that Hot Skinny Sketch. Hot Skinny Sketch. Hot Skinny Sketch. You get it. Uh, another possible one would be maybe the next time all the cicadas wake up, they grow as big as houses and try to eat us all up. Okay, we got to watch out for that. Because what if the cicadas turn out to be like those bugs from uh, that movie Starship Troopers, which of course I have not seen, because as everybody knows, the only thing I've ever seen on a TV is LSU Football Tigers. Uh, that would be bad if all them cicadas was to try to eat us up. So what I do is anytime I see a hole in the ground, I yell down in there, hey, is you a cicada? And if anybody answers yes, I shoot a gun down into a hole, kill the cicada. Um, that's that's my solution to that. That's a really important solution. You got to consider that. Uh, we got Mr. Londonian here in the show saying, Woo 2, the most excited Pokemon. Oh, that's in response to me saying Woo 2 to AC Improv saying Woo. Wow, wow, wow. Well, welcome to the show, <laughs> Mr. Londonian. Uh, uh, and then, okay, so back to the apocalypse is real quick. So the third possible apocalypse that I wanted to have us all consider today is that maybe there's a nuclear submarine still down underwater from World War II that's been mutating all the kelp down there. And then all the kelp is going to come up on land and start strangling us because they mad at us for eating their brother the seaweed. Got to watch out for that. So what I'm doing is anytime I'm near a coastline, I have scissors. Because, you know, you can cut kelp. Okay. Now, of course, you've probably been wondering what day it is, right? Because everybody, when they're watching a the thing, they're like, hmm, what day is it? Well, I'll tell you what day it is. It's December 10th, okay? 
It's December 10, 2020. It's the first night of Hanukkah, folks. And in Louisiana, Hanukkah is a very important day, okay? Mostly for the Jews, but also for everybody, right? Because we respect our Jewish brothers and sisters, okay? So uh, 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 here in Louisiana, one of the first things that we do for Hanukkah is right there on Bourbon Street in New Orleans, we light up a big menorah, okay? It's big. It does, traffic has to go around it. It's huge. And all the, uh, and there's all kinds of dudes and ladies just flashing it like it's Mardi Gras, but only for the menorah. Um, also, all the beignets in the city are either shaped like the Star of David or David Schwimmer. And if there's any Jews in any of our state penitentiaries, we let them out. And that's, of course, how we do Hanukkah in, in Louisiana. But y'all, you're probably wondering, how is, is this guy going to just yell stuff kind of fast, maybe too fast to understand for a whole, whole, whole hour and then trip on his words sometime for no reason? No, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce my guests, y'all, because back in the days when I was going door to door to all them open mic situations, talking about where, how we're going to stop my this, I was also signing folks up for my email list and saying, yo, if you want to get on this email list, then you'll be able to help folks You'll be able to know how to survive apocalypses because I'm going to send you emails telling you how. And you'll be able to help other folks do that, which is obviously the most important thing in the whole goddamn world. Surviving apocalypses, okay? And yeah, in past episodes, I've talked about the importance of Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Message Chicken Trip, but we're not going to do that today, okay? Because we don't have time for me to say everything I've ever said again. That's crazy. I can't do that every week. What we're going to do is we're going to get to my guest a little bit later on the show. We're going to be talking to a used car salesman named Mike Yost. Okay, started for that. Before that, we're going to talk to a dance instructor named Hildegard Wattweil. That could be only be great. And before that, we're going to talk to a plant nanny named Gita Gardner. And I'm very excited about all of these things, you know, and I hope you are too. Now, I do see in the chat we've had uh, some action from, say, Space Cowboy now. Uh, 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 oh, he's worried about them cicadas. Uh, yeah, he says, not the cicada. Yeah, you got to watch out for the cicada, Space Cowboy, now. Uh, and he says those things freak him out. <sighs> Dude, yeah. Oh, and look at this. Ribs says, happy Hanukkah. Look, y'all, if you're watching the show and you're not thinking to yourself, happy Hanukkah to Ribs too, you're wrong. You should be. Also, happy Hanukkah to all of you. Thanks for watching. Now, we are going to get to my first guest. I'm so excited to do this. Uh, this is somebody who is a plant nanny, and their name is Gina Gardner. Welcome to the show, Gina Gardner. Thank, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. So, so use a plant nanny, huh? What's that mean? You just like you go around rocking babies to to rocking plants to sleep in baby cradles. I mean, sometimes it's it's up to the to the plant owner. You know, I I, I help friends out. I usually just go and you know house sit basically, and I water mm -hmm. their plants and I take care of all the plants. And uh, yeah, it's it's what I do. I love plants. I love green things, grass, plants. That, hey, that's great. I mean, you know, especially in a time where there's a bunch of COVIDs out in the air getting inside all the humans and the animals, plants is something mm -hmm. that we can think of as safe and good. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I love plants. I mean, they're, they're definitely not getting COVID as far as I know. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah. I've been eating plants, and so far none of them have had a COVID inside trying to get up inside my stomach, eat my stomach lining. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe that's what's killing all the plants, though. Maybe they do have COVID. Oh, the plants is dying. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually. Uh, I'm not really uh, working right now as a, as a plant nanny. Uh, um, I I made a mistake, and uh, I'm I'm not I'm not comfortable with it. Uh, oh no! I, is it like one of those mistakes where at the end of the day, like you look back on it and laugh, or is it one of those mistakes where it's like at the end of the day you look at back on it and it's like, oh no we can never speak of this again. It's a, one of those situations where we have to pretend we didn't run over that guy with our car. Um, it's, it's more, yeah, it's one of the ones that like, I can't go to sleep at night because I, I have a, a immense amount of guilt. Um, and I, I don't look back. I don't look back at the moment and think, ha ha ha, that was funny. I think oh. I look back and I think I can't go back there. Uh Oh, well, listen, I mean, you brought it up on this show. So, uh, forgive me for asking questions about it. If you're not comfortable talking about it, but I gotta know, um, Tina, what'd you do? Um, so I, I was watching my friend's plants and, um, and they all died. And so now I'm, I'm on the run. Cause uh, I can't, I, I, I'm a plant nanny. I can't have that scarring oh. my reputation. Yeah. I mean, it'd be much better for your friend to come home, see that the plants are dead and you're gone and think to herself, oh no, somebody killed all these plants and my friend. And my friend. Yeah, exactly. Then at least, 
you know, I might not be able to be friends with her anymore, but at that point, at least, you know, at least I can and live with the fact that I was a good plant nanny and she'll never know that I was a bad plant nanny because I'm a good plant nanny. I mean, as far as I know, since you told me that, I think that that's true. Uh, now, I do notice that you're kind of like flashing in and out. Are you some, using some kind of masking technology to 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 hide your face? Uh, yeah, I, I'm on the I'm on the run right now, so I'm just uh, I'm just making sure that you know that no one knows that I killed all the plants. I mean, you know, but don't tell right. anyone, okay? Uh, yeah, no. I mean, Space Cowboy knows, Bree 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 Ribs knows, M Mr. London Ian knows, the Pack Theater knows, but but that's just the folks who's watching the show. I mean, and, and that's not the whole world. And and as far as I know, none of them is police, so you're probably okay. What if one of them's your friend, though? Oh no. Oh gosh, I hope not. Should I go? <laughs> Space Cowboy now is he? No. No, I don't have any friends named Space Cowboy now. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Space Cowboy uh -huh. then. That's one of my friends. Space Cowboy then is one of your friends? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a different person, I think. I think so. It, it's similar, but not the same. Now, uh, Jock Talk Podcast says that they've read about the plant nanny killer. Already? Yeah. It sounds like you are already up in the news. I oh, mean, no. I do recall actually seeing a story about a plant nanny killer where uh, somebody reported that their friend was up in their house, they killed up all their plants, and then they stole $6 million from behind their refrigerator. That's not you, right? Uh, no, I don't have six million dollars. If I had six million dollars, I'd replace all the plants. That's true. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, but I, uh, but I mean, I wish I had six million dollars to run with because uh, staying in these motels is really expensive. It's adding up, and uh, you know, I just don't know where I'm going. I don't have any direction in my life now. My entire career is behind me. I've killed all the plants, and no one's gonna hire me as a plant nanny anymore. Well, sure. I mean, yeah, you got to look to the future, but I also want to look to the past just for a minute. I mean, what happened with the plants? Did you just forget to water them or did you commit plant murder? Um, I don't know. It all happened so fast. One of the plants, I was watering it just like I always do every every day. I water mm -hmm. the plants. Uh, I sat on you one of the plants. water the plants every day? Every, every day. Well, okay. That explains how you killed the plants. No, no. You you're supposed to water plants every day, just like I water myself every day. Right? Sure. But, well, I mean, n plants is designed to suck up all the rain when the rain comes down. You know, like kind of like the itsy bitsy spider, but in a different way. Uh, uh, and uh, <laughs> I made myself chuckle with that one. I'm, I apologize. One second. <laughs> um, uh, 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 so, but like, so, uh, but the rain doesn't come every day, right? Like some plants, like rainforest plants, they can handle rain every day. But most plants, they need it every once in a while. I would think as a plant nanny, you would know that. Yeah, I mean, I didn't give them water all the time. Sometimes I'd switch it up. I gave one of the plants uh, milk because of strong bones. Um, okay, plants bones. No, keep what? going. I'm sorry. Keep going. You gave one of the plants milk because of strong bones. Milk don't have bones. Well, Milk doesn't uh, have bones either. I'm sure plant. they have bones, but uh, I mean, okay, yeah, let me continue. One of them, I made sure uh, I gave him some alcohol because I was watching TV alone and I was bored and I was talking to the plant and we seemed to be having a good conversation. So I gave gave him some wine. Um, uh, yeah. I uh, I sat on one because I heard that they were sturdy plants and then it turns out they're not so sturdy. So that one died. What kind uh, of plant was that that you thought was going to be sturdy? A cactus? Uh, uh, aloe vera. Oh, shoot. Hey, that one's spiky too. I get it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then I cursed a lot in front of uh, in front of the little baby plant. I'm pretty sure that's how it died. Oh, yeah. You can't curse in front of babies. They they die from that. It's that Everybody knows that. You curse in front of a baby, it immediately drops dead. God God smites it for hearing you swear. That's why they have a swear jar, because if not, you know, then all these babies would be just That's dying. right. It's a similar situation to a tooth fairy where money absolves the crime. Exactly. The tooth fairy or the Catholic Church. Now, uh, what what are you thinking you're going to do now? Are you trying to get back into plant nannying? I mean, obviously, it seems like you don't know how to do it. You really want to feed beverages to plants. But I imagine you had to, in, while you're on the road, try to pick up some cash since you didn't get that $6 million. How are you doing it? Are you plant nannying around the country on your way to find a, a safe haven? Yeah, yeah. I, I basically, I know I have some business cards. I know that's kind of old school, but... But sometimes it works with the older generation. So I've just been plant nannying as as I go. I've been sending out uh, cold emails. I've been cold calling people and and uh, and and watching their plants. Um, wow. 
but I haven't had a good streak lately. I've been uh, unfortunately uh, killing all the plants. Oh no! So you didn't just kill your friends' plants. You've been you've been going uh, 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 Airbnb to Airbnb, killing off plants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, uh, it was just the one. It was one plant at the last place. It wasn't a big deal. They probably won't even notice. And 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 now I'm, I'm now I'm I'm gone. They don't even know. I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to get caught. That's that's all I'm saying is I'm I am going to be a good plant man nanny going forward. I've learned my lesson in not killing plants. Well, Gina, I, I hope that that's true. I mean, but it does sound like you killed another plant at your last stop. You didn't like feed it strawberry milk because you thought it would make it grow strawberries, did you? Uh, I mean, I thought that that's how that worked. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. That's a crazy suggestion I made. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I didn't do that. That's silly. Yeah, of course you were joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did do that. You wouldn't have agreed to it if you were if you didn't. Listen, no. I have a change of, change of direction real quick because Jock Doc Podcast wants to know how cold are these emails you're sending out? Um, they're, they're pretty chilly. Um, you know, they're just cold. It, it's just my name. It's saying what I do. They don't know me. They're strangers. Um, because I can't I can't reach out to friends anymore. I'm pretty sure that uh that bridge has been all those bridges have been burned. Um, since I killed all my friends' plants. Yeah, that'll do that. That'll do that, man. Gina, I, I, I'm worried about you. You know, because because a person who who has a direction in life, uh, you know, a, a person who like who knows what they're good at is a person who can find happiness. But a person who's not sure is a person who's kind of stuck in limbo a little bit. And you know, as somebody who came to one of my talks and got on my email list, I just want the best for you. You know, so I'm thinking to myself. I mean, yeah, Space Cowboy agrees. We're worried about you, Gina. So I'm thinking to myself. Gina, what's something you could do that doesn't involve plants? You ever no, think no. about nannying? Regular nannying? I mm -hmm. mean, I guess if I watered a baby every day, it would it's about the same amount of work. Um actually for that yeah. one you'd want milk. Oh. Oh. Um, and I could change the soil I change the soil sometimes, uh, put it out in the sun. I can put a baby out in the sun. Um, yeah, and then for a short amount of time. Yeah, you don't want to get sunburned, but yeah. Oh, for a short amount of time. Oh, I'm not used to that kind of oversight. Um, I don't know. I've never considered regular nannying, but I might consider it. Um, I do have one plant that I've kept pretty alive, though, and I'm very proud of it. Oh, and I think maybe that'll be my, uh, yeah, my my future in being a plant nanny can can continue once I uh, get out of the country. So this oh, that's is my. What plant have you kept alive? Uh, oh, oh, it's not alive anymore. Uh, it was alive. Oh. Oh no! The way that uh, did your screen is obfuscating yourself is making it hard to see what this plant is. But it does look like it's a blue bowl. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, and there's no plant in there. Oh no, Gina. Oh, was that something that was your own? Uh, no. I took this one from the last Airbnb because they only had one plant they wanted me to watch, and I killed it. So I they thought I one could. They life. wanted you to watch, so you took their other plant. Yes. They had two plants, but one of them they didn't want you to watch. No, so took it. I took it. Oh, that's because honestly that's possible. If they are hiring a plant nanny and they're not asking that nanny to watch one of their plants, they shouldn't have that plant. Exactly. Like, what were they going to do? Hire another plant nanny while I was watching one plant, and then have another plant nanny watch the other plant? That's too many plant nannies. If you're asking me, especially during COVID. At the time was there? What was that? There wasn't another person at the in the house at the time, was there? Maybe watching that plant. No, no, I didn't see any other people there. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I did hear some movement, so they, they might have been a real sneaky plant nanny, but I didn't see anybody. Uh, Classic I don't know. plant nanny, always sneaking around. Yeah, I mean, these Airbnb people, maybe they didn't trust me. Maybe they got someone to sneak around because they maybe they heard that I was killing plants. And, 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 uh, oh, yeah, God. I mean, Chuck Dog read about it in the paper, although that one turned out to maybe be a different one who had $6 million that they stole from behind a refrigerator. But, you know, oh, it could man. be the same thing. Maybe that was that other plant nanny. Maybe that's why they were sneaking around. Yeah. Oh, boy. I wish we had time to delve into this, but we do have to get into our next guest. But I think what you should do is try to frame this other plant nanny for all the crimes you've committed oh. and then beg for God for your forgiveness. And by that, I mean donate money to the Catholic Church. That's a great idea. And then I'll become a regular nanny and and babysit baby plants and real babies 
Yeah, yeah, and I am realizing now I suggested a, a job that has more responsibility after hearing that you had a trouble maintaining the responsibility of plant life, but at the same time, I think maybe more responsibility will bring out the best in you, right? I, I think so, yeah, I think so. I hope so. Anyway, we have a question from, uh, through my publicist at Ezra Party or on Instagram from at Brindiana Jones on Instagram, who... Huh, I'm looking at her picture and uh, and I'm looking at you and I'm thinking to myself, oh yeah, she kind of looks like if you wasn't wearing a blonde wig and a hoodie. Oh, can you tell that this is a wig? Oh man. Yeah, oh sure no, can. oh God. Anyway, Indiana Jones wants to know what place. happens regularly that you think would horrify a person from a hundred years ago? Ooh, that's a fantastic question. I'll take it first, but it's coming to you too. Um, in my opinion, the thing that happens most frequently uh, that would horrify a person from, uh, uh, what was it, 100 years ago? Yeah, 100 years ago. It's got to be just Burger King, just the existence of Burger King. I mean, that's horrifying, right? That's for that's, me. That's what I think. That's pretty scary. Yeah. That's um, I would probably say, um, I, I'm, I'm going to say uh, Walmart. Walmart. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's scary. It's a big, 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 big store. Everyone's wearing the same can I help you vest. It's intimidating. Can you imagine if you're a person from a hundred years ago, you walk into a Walmart on Black Friday and then all of a sudden people just start trampling you and you're like, I was in heaven. And but now you're just killing me running over my back like this? Dang. Yeah, that's a special kind of hell. Fluorescent lighting. That's scary. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So many things could scare people who are old. And can I help you, Vesta? Nobody's helping you. That's that's Ooh, yeah. terrifying. False advertising is terrifying. Oh, man. There's so oh, many man. things. This, this is a fruitful question that, that this at Brindiana Jones character asked. So very good job, at Brindiana Jones. Now, we do have to get to our next guest. Gina, please stick around. Help me, help me talk to her. Our next guest is a dance instructor. Uh, whose name is Hildegund Rottweil. Very excited to talk to her. Hildegund, welcome to the show. Hello, I am Hildegon Rottweil, but you can call me Hildi. This is what my grandmother called me when I was a little girl and she was still alive. Oh, wow. Well, I, I, I'm sorry to hear that she's passed, but I'm excited to refer to you as Hildi since that is the name you prefer, Hildi. Thank you for being here. How are, uh, how are you doing in all these COVIDs being up in the air? It's a very exciting time. Well, it's a very exciting time that you are the first person who's answered that way in my question about COVID. <laughs> it's so many different uh, situations and so many different ways to die. Now it's a new one and maybe people now are understanding more about uh, life. That's a good point. Yeah. The more ways you face death, the more you understand about life. That's a Yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. But how has the dance instructing been going? I imagine prior to all these COVIDs being up in the air, you would have dance recitals and dance rehearsals up in a dance studio or something like that. What you doing now that you're stuck at home? No, I never um, went in person. I am. Uh, oh. I would uh, make on a uh, internet. I go to internet to look for human connection. Hmm. And I often am making up dance moves inside my mind and make a dance party with uh, my friends who are um, right now, I'm living with some uh, three cats. Oh, sure. That's nice. So, okay, so you're just making dance videos with your cats. Are you putting them up on YouTube? Are people into them? No, not not videos, moves, and make moves in my mind. Oh, okay. So you're not even moving your body; they just up in your head. You're thinking about them. No, and then and then I move my body. Okay, okay, all right. Well, that that sounds uh fun. Uh, I see that there's a grim reaper hanging on your on your on your blue screen there. Um, why why is that? Oh. <laughs> Hildy, did you not know it was there? Hildy's picking it up for anybody who's not watching but is listening. I um, I it reminds me of my grandmother. Oh sure, it's a very dead skeleton, but I I do see how that could remind you of somebody who in your life is also passed away. 
I, Looks like my dead grandma also. So maybe it could have been one of your plants. <laughs> oh, that's true. No, so, as we said, plants don't have bones. I don't know. But I would really, I would love to sometime teach you, Lester, some dance moves. Sure, yeah. That'd be great. No, well, now, I mean, now is the perfect time. You got dance moves ready for us? Yeah. Um, yeah. I um, uh, Now I'm so excited. This is very nice. Okay. okay. Uh, now, I do have podcast listeners who don't watch, so I might describe what's happening just for them, just so you know. Okay. Um, or maybe should I stay seated and only explain it? Like no, no, no. Do your dance for sure. The people who's watching at home, they they are they're the winners in this instance. You know, the podcast viewers is missing out. I've got some nerves. I could dance out right now. I'd appreciate the movement. Okay. okay so right now, Hildy is raising her right hand. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you one of uh, my most favorite dance move is. Okay, great. It's called um, Das Buch. Uh, this is German for the book. And now if you imagine a book with two covers and uh -huh. the pages in between. Oh, okay. So her hands is the book covers, but then she's twiddling her fingers to make the, the pages in between. Yep, keep going. Yeah. And then also uh, Musik, which is German for music. Oh, really? And and you uh, and count and yeah, buch buch durchblättern, buch buch durchblättern, buch buch durchblättern, buch buch durchblättern. Wow, that's wow. Great. yeah. I mean, that's a dance move for sure. What that was for anybody listening at home was the book and the pages motion set to that beat. So just imagine it. Wow. Well, that that's cool, Hildy. I mean, uh, I, I do think like. Uh, I'm curious, so you have the blue screen, right? And you have this dance move, right? And you have these three cats who probably want to dance with you, I assume, behind the camera right now, these cats is dancing with you. Um, do you ever want to put them out there in, in a video format? You got that blue screen, you can put any background behind you you wanted. We are wanting to make a TikTok channel. Ooh. That could be fun. Also, what? maybe it could be for making my human connection. For, right. Yeah. How has that been going, by the way? Have you have you found that doing this at home, where you're imagining dance moves and then doing them with your cats, has you found that that makes any connection with humans for you? I imagine in my mind, it's many humans mm -hmm. who are so nice, and I tell them about um, uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I can I tell you something crazy right now? You yeah. got two humans right here on video with you watching your dance moves, connecting with you. Plus, whoa, at, at least Space Cowboy Jock Jock podcast in the chat. Oh, so that's four humans right now that you're connecting with. What would you want to tell those humans that you're connecting with? Uh, us. Um, well, <laughs> you know, you don't have to rush into it, just like some people say, like, Hey, I want to tell my deepest, darkest secret, and then it's like, Oh, no, wait, I don't really want to tell that. It's, that's a lot of pressure, and then they just tell like a small uh, a secret that's not that bad, you know. Like, uh, today I had for breakfast. Um, actually, I don't think I had breakfast today. Dang, I should have done that. See, there you go. That's like a mild secret. That sounds like a crime, like. Oh, maybe you'll be arrested now. Very bad. Oh no, you think? Maybe. I, I hope not. I, uh, I like um before, I, I was um, I had tea, with Lebkuchen. Lebkuchen is German around uh, Christmas time. A specialty, very nice. <laughs> that sounds great. Hey, that's perfect. That's a that is that is a gateway secret. Okay, now you've told us a gateway secret. Do you want to work your way up to like a mid tier secret, like a like a like a middle school memory or something? Um, this is how human connections are made. You share something minor, then you share something like kind of important, and then you share something major. I like uh, stripes. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you're wearing yeah. stripes. Yeah. Anybody podcast listening? Uh, yeah, Hildy's wearing a striped shirt. Um, it's not my own. 
Oh, really? Who'd you get the shirt from? I can't say. Oh, no, that's a secret. Hildy, <laughs> you keep the whatever secrets you got to keep, but I got I do want to know. Hildy, did you steal that shirt? I'm just kidding. It's my shirt. <laughs> oh, oh. <Hildy. laughs> What? Why did you feel the need to to tell us that you that it wasn't your shirt? I I wanted to be suspenseful and interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, it worked. It, I, it I was worked. I was suspensed. I was very suspensed. But I hope I didn't give anyone heart problems. <laughs> so I was thinking, oh no, now this girl has come on and gone live uh, confessions, and they're going to hear helicopters and police sirens it would be so terrible and i would would be shot and everyone would be so shocked oh she was just so teaching a dance in a dance move it was so good one and then suddenly she was shot and murdered by for a crime and could be so exciting but also shocking and maybe people would not know how to react and I would feel sorry if it made them not be able to have uh, their dinner. Oh my God! Yeah, sound off in the chat if this whole experience has made it hard for you to have dinner, or if you had a heart attack. I feel like Gina, it's gonna happen. I mean, have you ever seen a combination of dance and and and, and uh, emotional intimacy like this before? Wait, who? Uh, Gina. Gina. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you <laughs> can you repeat that? I was too busy thinking about all the the possible. Um, crime that was happening. In my head. Uh, yeah. and, uh, I was wondering, Gina, uh, uh, if you've ever seen a combination of dance moves and emotional intimacy like this before. Um, no, it's it's really making my heart race. It's bringing me back to memories of killing plants recently. Um, and uh -huh. it's uh, it's really it's really getting in my head. I don't I don't know. I feel a lot of emotions right now. <sighs> Hildy, what just happened? Did that? Did that? Did that? Did that? Uh, did, did that um, uh, 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 what is it called? Grim Reaper jump up into the screen on, on its own, or, or was that you holding it up there? No, I, I was. One moment I was thinking about my next dance move I want to teach you, and suddenly I got beat on my hand, and I looked down, and it was that guy. This guy. I thought that was your grandmother. No, it reminds me of my grandmother. Oh, okay, good. Okay, good. Wow. Sorry, well, I've got death on the brain. No, that's okay. now, now, Hildy, you, you said you were thinking about the next dance move you wanted to teach us. I mean, I'd love to get a dance move in a secret from you. All right, the next dance move mm -hmm. is... It's called um, Der Umschlag, which is German for the envelope. <laughs> okay, now you imagine an envelope with very sharp corners and very straight sides. And oh, then so open your arms very straight. And very small, but like paper, this small. And also music, uh, music. Uh huh. And Ein, zwei, drei, vier, um, schlag, um, schlag, um, schlag, um, 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 um. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hildy, great, great. So for the listener, that was oh. a, uh, imagine a person whose shoulders just bounce up at every instance of that beat. And that's what you saw. Wow. Hildy, that was, that was great. Now, I mean, oh. that. Did that dance make you feel uh, emotionally more connected to us, ready to reveal a bigger secret? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh oh. I thought I heard of some police outside. I heard a lot. Yeah. I, 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 they would take uh, me away. <laughs> oh. I hope not. Oh, sometimes I'm telling myself, oh, Hildy, your imagination is so strong. Maybe you are making all of these things really happen. <laughs> and be careful be careful because yeah could be who knows <laughs> could be sometimes really crazy things you're thinking and suddenly you wake up and it's all happening oh yeah yeah i know that feeling
Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I remember warning everybody about an apocalypse coming, and then all of a sudden there was the coronavirus. So I, I, I totally get it. Um, I'd love to hear that secret. We do have to get to our next guest, but I'd love to hear that secret first. Okay. Um. <laughs> I um since it has been um pandemic mm -hmm. I don't wear any deodorant anymore because everyone is wearing a mask so <laughs> it wouldn't make much sense anyway <laughs> but it's, I don't tell them to think that I am not worth of human connection <laughs> And Hildy, that is a perfect mid-tier secret. I love that. I love that. Because that is something that's like kind of like you wouldn't want people to know, but at the same time, it's like pretty innocent and funny. So, oh, that was perfect. Thank you so much for trusting us with that information, Hildy. Well, all right. Uh, we do have to get to our next guest. I hope I hope we can find a third dance move and and, and maybe a, a true secret from you at some point. But we do have to get to our next oh, guest first. We can uh, all have a dance party. <laughs> yeah, we could have a dance party. That's a great idea. That's a great way to end the show. Um, but before we get to my next guest, we do have a question coming in to me through my publicist at Ezra Partier from, oh, did my mouse do that thing where it dies again? Nope, it's back. OK. Um, from at Bikini Kitten on Instagram, who I'm looking at Bikini Kitten's pictures and yeah, Bikini Kitten looks to me like if you, Hildy, didn't have those glasses on and were holding a cat. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> Weird world out there. Anyway, Bikini Kitten wants to know, what is your, I wonder if anyone else does this thing. Oh, okay. I'll take this question first. Um, uh, for me, what I'm always wondering if other people do is like, do other people hang out down inside their bunker all day, 24 hours a day, and think to themselves that they're doing a good job for humanity? Or are they all fools? You know, that's my question. What about you, Hildy? Anything that you do that you wonder if anybody else does this? Um, I wonder if people like um, talking with squirrels in the park for many hours at a time. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. I wonder that too. Uh, uh, personally, I've never done that, but that's just me. Hmm. Okay, well, now we do have to get to our next guest, whose name is coming up in just a second, because before I say his name, I gotta say his title. He is, of course, a used car salesman. And his name, yeah, clap for him, absolutely. And his name is Mike Yost. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you. What's man. up, Lester Pips, man? How you doing? Uh, do, doing well, Mike. Doing well. How are you? Oh, dude, it's good to finally be here. I remember I saw one of your live talks. Uh, you were in Tottenville in Staten Island, and I mm -hmm. was like, some some talk going on. I love live stuff. And uh, then I got your email list, and you kind of been a part of like, you know, getting your, you've been a part of my inbox for a while. So it's kind of cool being being on here. But it's it's uh, certified pre-owned, pre-owned, used, used. It's kind of like, you know, one of those oh, things. Sure, yeah. People are like, oh, this guy, you know, but it's pre-owned, you know. Right, right. No, as, and as a guy who does talks, like you were saying, I know the power of words. So I'll, I'll make sure I get that right. Certified pre-owned car dealer, Mike Yost. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I remember meeting you at that at that uh, at that experience. You you brought me outside. You said I want to sign up for for your email list, but I also want to interest you in this used, uh, excuse me, certified pre-owned Subaru Outback. And I was thinking to myself, wow, that that's a guy who's always on the job. Yeah, man. I mean, that, and I, I you know I remember that because I was like pretty blown away, but. The thing is that Outback, you know, you didn't you didn't bite on the hook, but Subarus are like they stay on the road longer than any other car. So, so if you are if you ever do like you're looking for another car, you know, like the Outback is like uh, it's a good it's it's a really good option from me or like from from anybody, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now I am down here in the bunker outside Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So buying a car in New York doesn't necessarily make sense, but yeah. if it's the best deal, it's the best deal. So we have to talk. But I'm curious, Mike, I mean, how has business been now that all these people is inside during these COVIDs? Yeah, bro. It's like, you know, business is uh, at first, like when the lockdown hit, it was just like that. You know, we weren't even going into work. We were like, how are we going to do this? You know, so mm -hmm. we were kind of like had a lot of Zoom meetings like everyone else. But when when uh, when things started getting a little bit like, you know, w w when they're like, all right. They gave us a little like a little window. Uh, I'll tell you what, the cars that that you could like do a little camping in, right? 
Like we, you know, we got this is a pre-owned dealership. We got everything. We have a few RVs. Those things are selling like hotcakes. You can't find an RV. Uh, you can't find an RV, man, because everyone's taking vacations. Like you know, they don't want to stay at the Holiday Inn Express. They right. want to like, you know what I mean? They're trying to be COVID safe as they as they should be, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say it's, I'd say it's down, but you know, as we say at uh, you know, the Miller Auto Sales, you know, it, it doesn't stay down long, you know. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's the thing about a, about a business is it has to rebound or else it dies. So you got to assume it's going to rebound or you're in trouble. Now, uh, I'm curious, has your personal life suffered at all from all these COVIDs being up in the air? Are you, how, are you, how are you doing at home? Yeah, man. It's, it's are you wrong. up inside a bunker or what? Am I in a bunker? No, no, I'm mean, not in a bunker, but, but oh. I'm in an apartment and, you know, you just trying to get out of the apartment. I got to get in an elevator. You know what I mean? So... The person, you know, you know, it's just me and me and my girlfriend, and and, but it's been tough. You know, we haven't spent so much time together because she's, you know, she's, uh, she works in uh, in advertising. So, you know, but yeah, they're I all remote. You telling me when when we met that she was working in advertisements for new cars, and you found that to be like kind of a grading uh, uh, thing between you, but you was trying to work through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, because you know, she works over at, at in actual. You know, I call them the I call them the I call them the brand the big bad brand dealerships, right? She's over at uh, Toyota Sayasa in Long Island, and and uh, you know, she's she's you know, it's like we, we, <laughs> when we first started because we're both we're both we're both working people. You know, we're like sure. our careers mean a lot to us. So uh, yeah, it was a you know it was a, it was a bit of it was a little bit a little bit of stinky stinky. Uh, bad smell at first between us but but eventually you know love is love is what 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 defines is is that it's like do we love each other you know what i mean and and we do so it's fucking cause bro you know what i mean so is it can i can I, sorry about that I, can oh I, yeah can no I, don't you you say whatever you want now uh, uh that, i mean that makes so much sense you know yeah. like a relationship really is finding a way to overcome the stinky bad smells between you <sighs> wow that's bless you bro that's why you're the that's why you talk for a living, bro. That hey, was good, dude. <laughs> you said it. You said that it. Was I good. it. But yeah, uh, now, uh, Mike, in the chat, young woman wants to know, what are your thoughts on Connecticut? Oh, CT, dude? Fucking whatever, bro. Like, CT's rough, dude. I wouldn't want to be from Connecticut. It's like, there's nothing to it, dude. It's like, it's like you know, like Jersey, they got a cool kind of rep. They got, you know, the East Rutherford. They got the Giant Stadium. You know, New York speaks for itself. But Connecticut's kind of like the third, like, you know, like New York sports, like state, you know, at least the lower half. And it's kind of like, all right, dude, you know, I don't know. I just don't like good for you. You know what I mean? I just don't want to move to Connecticut, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, if you want to buy a car for me from Connecticut, dude, like, you know, I'll, I'll talk. I'll, you know, how many people I mean, shit, I shouldn't have said that because I'm, you know, I'm a relationship guy. And like, if anyone came into my dealership and they I don't know what your audience is like, but anyway, I like Connecticut, man. Connecticut's a great place to live. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's smart of you to to waffle like that because you wouldn't want to get caught saying anything negative about any place if you're trying to sell it. I didn't yeah. say anything bad about Connecticut last year. Mm -hmm. I didn't say one bad thing. You sure didn't. You sure didn't. Um, for me personally, I think Connecticut terrible. No one should ever go there. But that's oh, just me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. That's a that's a hot take. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know a thing about Connecticut. I've lived in Louisiana my whole life, right down here in the bunker in Baton Rouge. Now, uh, 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 I am curious, though. Now, Gina, you are on the run. So I'm thinking to myself, like, uh, when you're on the run, maybe you do need a car that you can camp out in. And maybe you and Mike could uh, uh, find a connection there. Yeah. You know, I've been thinking about switching out my car just to, you know, kind of keep a low radar. Um, mm -hmm. Do you do, like, all cash sales? Oh yeah, I love that. What okay. what kind of uh, what kind of car are you driving right now? You know, I know I heard earlier you're on the run, so don't worry about like you know color or anything like that. But what's the make? You know? Yeah, don't tell us the color, but do tell us the make and the license plate. Yeah, okay, no, not the plate, but the make. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, good call. Yeah, I don't want to get caught. A Nissan. I'm driving a Nissan right now. What's the model? Like you know, it's an Altima, right? I can just tell. Yeah, it's an Altima. Yeah, everyone gets an Altima, man. I love all. That was my that was one of my uh, that was one of my second cars, man. I love the Altima, but. If you're talking about a cross-country road trip, you're on the run, you're really going to want an all-wheel drive system because, you know, as you know, I don't know where you live, but weather is like a, a factor when you don't have that. You get stuck. You had to call AAA if you're on the run. What if the guy from AAA happens to know the people oh, whose yeah. plants you killed? Like, and then he's going to say, oh, remember you, the person who's going to look after your plants, the plant whisperer who, like, wasn't like, you know? 
And now you fucking, now you're done, right? Because now AAA guys got going to tow you right to the people. Yeah, so. I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want to have to, you know, start killing people because they know about me killing plants. That's not the direction I want to take in my life. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I didn't say I'm, anything about killing people. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. I'm like glad to hear you say that you're not trying to kill people, but I'm scared to hear you bring up the idea of killing people. I'm just saying that's that's where things escalate once you've killed a lot of plants and you're on the run. I, do, I don't want it to come to that. So I just want to make a safe journey across the country and keep a low profile. So, yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, everyone knows the Green River Killer got his got his start by being the the Green Plant Killer, really? who was only green, killing green plants. And de this was definitely worth saying. Um, now, uh, uh, I am curious again, Mike. Uh, at any point, have you found yourself thinking to yourself, "Well, if I wasn't selling AC Improv," says the Green Thumb Killer, which is a hundred percent good punch up. Now, uh, I'm curious, uh, <laughs> what was my question going to be? Oh, yeah, Mike, uh, uh, so, you know, you finding yourself having a trouble with these pre-owned vehicles now that you now that this COVID is up in the air. If you wasn't selling cars, if you wasn't doing what you're doing, is there another role you'd like? Like in, in the world, like a vocation, like something else? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, bro. Like, I kind of want to be like, like, I've thought about being like a priest, you know? Like, oh yeah! Like, wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm too much of a fucking. I'm I'm too much of a like. I can't like I can't like you know focus for that long. But honestly, like anybody who can like you know every day every like one day like every time you know I go to church I'm like oh this guy gets 45 minutes can talk about whatever do like the homily or whatever and I'm like yeah it's pretty cool you know like because in 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 sales. You got to like, you want to have that kind of time to like talk to someone. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. If I was a priest and I cost it, I mean, you, I, but I can, I, can I still sell cars or no? Uh, you know, that I feel like that's a gray area in the clergy because yeah. there's definitely specific things that they're not allowed to do, but I don't think anyone ever said priests can't sell cars. I don't believe that's in there. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. So if I could get like, you know, if I could, if I could get the attention of people for 45 minutes and mm -hmm. of course I, you know, if I was a priest, I'd probably talk a little bit about God, but you know, what's better than, you know, what's a better blessing than just like a, a good value on a low mileage, reliable warranty through the mill auto sales, pre-owned certified by the mill auto sales vehicle. You know what I mean? Sure. What kind of blessing I mean, is that right there? You know, I'm curious though. What, what, what's like your holy grail of of pre owned vehicle? Is it that oh. Subaru Outback you tried to sell me, <laughs> Lester, bro? That's a big question, man. That's a you know that's like that's like that. There's that, I'll give you my I'll give you my my elevator pitch on that. Okay, my elevator like okay. like response there. If we're you know we're up we're on we're on floor one, we got to get to floor ten and both get off. Subaru Outbacks in my top five, right? Okay, number one, number one used car. Is uh is a Ford Bronco. Ford Bronco. Wow, does it have to be white? <laughs> yeah, everyone <laughs> thinks about that, right? Everyone uh -huh. thinks about that chase, but it's not about the nineties or late eighties, it's about the sixties. Those cars you can actually like I'm not, not even no gas, bro. No gas. Like you could sell those cars like like mad money right there. Mad money. It's just it just goes up. It's like the uh it's like the you know, the, the mid nineties uh Apple stock of cars, bro. It just keeps mm, going up. Wow. That's a surprising answer because I, I haven't seen too many of those on the road anymore. But hey, that's just me. Now, I'm curious, you know, you are a person who forges connections, right? And we've got Hildegard Rottweil sitting here thinking to herself that she's having trouble forging human connections. I mean, uh, do you have any advice for Hildy on how to make how to how to make her dance moves become a, a human connection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say, Hildy, I would say the, the biggest thing for you is to like uh you got to kind of like you got to throw a little sugar on it first, right? You got to like kind of like sugarcoat whatever you, you whatever you're putting out there, right? Like you got to come in and and maybe like get your dance moves on a, on a, on a on a like a um, lookbook, like a brochure, right? And print out these things, these like brochures, your dance brochures, like you know, make them nice, make them glamorous, and start handing them out. Say so you want, hey, you want to see my dance moves? And they say no. I'm like, hey, let me give you a brochure. You know, because that's what we do in car sales. He's like, you don't, you don't, yeah, you, know, you, you don't think you like an Outback. 
Let's see who brought shore, you know, because all you see is the outback in Staten Island on the on on the on the concrete. Why do you see it out in the out in the wild? You know what I mean? Now you're gonna you, you know, what do you think about that, Hildy, huh? Would I have to be uh without clothes? No, no, whoa, 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 no, you know, do whatever you want with like you can dress however you want, you know, like as many clothes you I was just saying you do your moves, right? In in like I don't know, like, like go, go, look, get a car brochure and see where they do it with the cars. Like, you know, like it's usually like a cool canyon road with the skinny skyline or like a desert, and do your moves there. Because if people say, "Oh, like, oh, these moves," look at all the possibilities with these dance moves. Oh, like a nineteen sixty two Mustang. Yeah, exactly. Now you're talking. Yeah, that's a got moves now i mean hildy uh 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 i think now would be the perfect time if you're comfortable we i'd love to see that third dance move now maybe even inspired by that 1962 mustang third dance move in a, in a secret i think it's time okay he's gonna he's gonna make you a big screen here oop that's the one oh very exciting okay Hildy's straightening up Hildy's ready okay now um, this one is called, um, was hatten wir schon? Das Buch, der Umschlag. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Um, das Haus, uh, that is um, the house in German. And now imagine a um, uh, um, house that has windows and uh -huh. a door and a, a roof. Okay, I'm picturing it. Yeah. Okay, and now in this house is a, um, I um, just uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Put um both hand up. And now one to back, one to front. Um, okay, and tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, the toes. I wow. it was very complicated, it was not fair for me to to try to do it. For um, no, for that was perfect. That was amazing. It was clearly the 1962 Ford Mustangs, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, windshield wipers going back and forth. That's what the tick tock was, right? Yeah. It, yes, exactly, Lester. You are very much paying attention, and mm -hmm. I think now we have very special human connection. And maybe if you want one day, we can be married. Oh, I just got divorced, so I do think f for me, like jumping right into another marriage would maybe be a mistake. But I am curious about you know maybe exploring some kind of friendship with you. That sounds pretty good. Okay, okay, maybe yeah, I got divorced my on Thanksgiving. Maybe. It was. Tough. Mike, maybe Mike also will marry both of us <laughs> and also Gina because now all of us are such good friends and we can all be married and um, it would be very nice because we don't uh, like ever meet in person because we don't want to give each other Corona COVID. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we could do some kind of Zoom Zoom group wedding situation, I suppose, if we all wanted that. But let's let's oh. let's settle that offline because I we are running out of time here on the show. Um, but uh, uh, we have to get to the last section of the show, which is where we uh, uh, young young woman in the chat says, "Lester, invite her to your bunker and do not pass up on this," which are are really good points. And I think you know, Hildy, we we can talk after. But uh, I, I man, I'm dying to know who young woman is. Because <laughs> anyway, um, uh, 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 what was this? Oh yeah, okay. So we got to get to the end of the show, which is where we do a little bit of plug situation. But before we do that, I do have a question coming to me from my uh, publicist at Ezra Party on Instagram. That is actually not from him, but is rather from at Andrew P Grace, who I'm looking at Andrew P Grace's Instagram account, and it's kind of like, yeah, I'm thinking to myself, that's Mike Yost without a hat. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, Andrew P. Grace wants to know, what is the worst location to have a carpet floor? Okay, great question. Let me answer this first. For me, in my opinion, worst location to put a carpet floor would be on your ceiling. What's it doing up there? 
Uh, Mike, you have any thoughts? Worst location to have a carpet floor? Uh, kitchen, bro, because all the food, like, it's a nightmare. Easy. That's, a, Easy. that's a great call. Easy. That's a great call. Now, uh, 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 Mike, we'll start with you. Anything that you want folks at home to look up on the internet or to find uh, online, and any last piece of advice, real quick, for, for them on surviving an apocalypse as a car, yeah, as a car salesman, uh, uh, or not as a car salesman. I'll, I'll stop talking, Utah. No, bro, I liked it, dude. Oh, you giving me like you were giving me fuel there. Like I was thinking, like I was always good in school because I always like listen. But yeah, bro, like no, just like everyone out there, keep listening to Lester Pips, man. Like this guy has got me through a lot of dark times, a lot of like low sales, a lot of like just Lester Pips, bro. You you uh, you something special, man. I really appreciate you having me on, and uh, everyone out there, just stay safe. And if you're in the New York tri-state area, come to Demello Auto Sales in uh, Staten Island. All right, great. Well, and also, of course, uh, uh, if you were to follow at Andrew P. Grace, you'd probably find out stuff about a guy who looks like Mike Yost. Yeah, don't worry about that. I don't know what that is. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, bro. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, Hildy, uh, your turn. Anything you want folks at home to look for on the internet? Any last words of advice? Um, look for our upcoming dance instructional videos for we can all make a dance party together. It would be so nice. That would be so nice. Could they find those by following at Bikini Kitten on Instagram? Yeah, there would be more. Uh, yes, yeah, more. <laughs> yes. Great, great. And and I don't know if you know this, but do at Bikini Kitten and at Andrew P. Grace have a podcast coming out? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, it I do know about that. That is. Mike, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, tell them, please. You say tell them. You say tell them. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I know this this guy, this the, whatever this handle is, Andrew P. Grace and Bikini Kitten do have a podcast coming out, and I hear it's like pretty good. They talk about life, like some some you know, COVID, like like life situation kind of situation stuff. And uh, yeah, you should check it out. Uh, uh, I I don't. Uh, it's uh, you know going to be a pretty good time. Do either of you know the name of it? Socially distance, emotionally spent. Life advice for the end of the world. Wow, that's perfect. I hope that the handle is shorter, but I love the name. When you get a handle, let me know. I will let folks know to to look out for it. Now, uh, Gina Gardner, um, is there anything out there that you want folks to look for on the internet or anything that you want to say for last words of advice to the folks at home? Please don't say, don't feed your pants milk. Uh, well, you know, I don't, I'd rather not put my name out there because I'm on the run after all. Um, right, even right. I, am, uh, I guess publicly uh, telling everyone that I killed a bunch of plants. Uh, but yeah, my, my word of advice is uh, to probably, uh, we have internets now so we can Google uh, how to take care of plants. I probably should have done that before. So I would say Google things if you're not sure, because sometimes you kill plants. And, That's really good you know, advice. Yeah. And one thing you could Google is at Brindiana Jones on Instagram if you want. I don't know why none of the three of you uh, wanted to say the name of these handles. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, for me, uh, it's my turn. Um, I'll say I am at Lester Pips on, on social media. Also, my publicist is at Ezra Partier on social media. That dude is the publicist for a lot of different shows. So uh, uh, so definitely uh, follow him if you want to know what he's up to. And now we have some great news. You're watching the App Pack Theater Twitch channel, perhaps? Uh, and you should be, because um, uh, there's more shows. Uh, coming up next, we got uh, uh, AC Improv's show. AC Improv's been in the chat, but actually AC Improv has a show called Play Cousins. It's coming up right now. I got to end the show immediately because it's time for that show. So we're going to leave the internet the way we always do, which is I just kind of... We- that was the show, now we did it. You know how to survive an apocalypse If anything should go down, you'll be okay And for that we say you're welcome Oh, so we gotta say thanks you to all these amazing guests Find them on the internet and then you'll never not know When they do it fun and stuff And that's what the fun of the show is Also to survive apocalypses And hey, we hit both those nails on the head with one bird or something, I guess, like that. So, anyway, I gotta sit thank you to the pick the <laughs> What? Uh, but yeah, thanks to them and thanks for watching.